Greetings, my name is Chris Schmohip, and I am extremely excited to be a semi-finalist with the possibility of being your next superintendent. I'm gonna take the next seven to 10 minutes to talk to you about two issues, um, or two questions that were, were posed to me, one really about building trust, and the other around the relationship between the board and the superintendent. On the topic of trust, there is no easy way to gain trust, and one of the hardest things to do for any leader is to regain trust once it's lost. In my leadership style, the one thing that I, the first and foremost um, thing that I try to do is never lose that trust. And what I have found over my 23 years in, in administrative life is that the best way to gain trust with people is to be transparent. And so in all of my leadership roles and all the opportunities that I've had, I've taken every possible um, situation and, and made sure to find some way to be as transparent as possible, whether that was back in the days of being an assistant principal, all the way to my current role as a chief education officer for Illinois. We have found, or I have found ways to be transparent with our public, with our stakeholders, and with ourselves. And so that is exactly what I would want to bring to East Baton Rouge uh, and to our school system, is the spirit of, uh, of, the spirit of transparency. And some, some ways that I've done it in the past, um, you know, I have had some of the most difficult roles um, I think anyone could find in, in public education. My last role, I was a um, CEO asked by the um, State Department of Ed and the governor's office to do a state takeover of a school district. And you can imagine there was a lot of distrust, a lot of angst into somebody coming into the school district um, that, they, that not everybody wanted um, and had significant power um, than most people had ever had. We were the it was the first time Ohio was taking over a school district and the new legislation called for the CEO to uh, silence the school board and be able to go into the contract and make any changes. Um, as you can imagine, uh, people were very distrustful of me coming into that position. Um, they were distrustful of the whole situation, the, tr the, the legislation that brought me, um, but also they didn't know what they were going to get. And so in my first year, um, I held over a hundred community meetings. And the purpose of those community meetings was I was trying to share my message, what I believe in education, what I believe in how we were going to transform the district, but I was also trying to hear from as many voices, right? Communication is a two-way street. And what I've realized is distrust, build, distrust builds when communications falter. And so we need to make sure that in everything we do in East Baton Rouge, we have communication systems for two-way communications where I'm getting my message out, but I'm also getting feedback and having that continuous feedback loop so that we as, as a district and the community itself feels that they are heard, and that, that everyone knows where we're moving in, the, in, 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 in what we're doing. That gets to my next point around strategic planning. And so one of the things, one of the first things that I did is coming in as a, as a superintendent was work closely with the community to build that strategic plan. And in that process, we were able to do significant and make some significant shifts in what we were doing for that school district with limited resistance from the community because the community understood what we were doing because we listened to them. I listened to them. I went to where they were. I had multiple opportunities for the community to engage with me personally, with the school district and our leaders, so that as we built the strategic plan, there were no surprises. And what we said we were going to do, we set out and we did that and we provided multiple updates, at least quarterly to the community. We'd have, um, but then also working with my communications team we would ensure that every single press as every single press release, um, we 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 mentioned and, and and came back to what we what we said we were going to do in that strategic plan. So they realized that these things that we were doing two years we we had discussed two years previously, and we had decided as a community that this is what we were going to do. And in that, we were able to do some you know incredible things. We we. Um, we were able to completely transform our trans transportation department. We were able to relieve ourselves of a corrective action plan around special education services that were not being provided correctly. Um, we were able to even push to different start times and, and really give our high school students an additional opportunities to sleep because that's what the research was showing. And as we were building this strategic plan, um, we made sure that we took our time and, and build consensus and had that collaborative efforts to go into the community, build those task forces and hear from everyone around what it is that 
we need to do for this district. So I never came in thinking that I knew all the answers. I didn't think that anyone on my team knew all the answers. What I know and what I still hold, what, what still holds true today is that you will make better decisions when you slow down, allow others to come into the space and be heard, and then from there get regular feedback as you're making that decision making. I think once you build that system and consistently show that that is your leadership style and that's how you will operate through all different situations, people will begin to to, to believe in, in you, in, in, in me, in the leadership, in the district, and we'll really see that we are here for students, that we are here to improve the lives of everyone, and that together that we could do it better than if we tried to do this alone. The next topic is around um, school board relationships. And so this question asked how we would build those, you know, those, the, the, the structures, um, how we would understand our roles, and also what we will do when maybe somebody steps outside of that role or we have differing opinions. First, I'd wanna say is that I hope we have differing opinions. I would never wanna work with the board or with the district that is a rubber stamp um, governance structure. I feel, that, I feel that once we engage in conversation, once we have some disagreements, um, that means that we're, we're, we passionately believe that we need to go what I would think in the, in the same direction, but we have differing opinions on how we're going to get there. And so in the role, we have to understand that the superintendent is not the sole decision maker, but also the Board of Education um, needs to work collaboratively with the community as they come to consensus and as they make that decision. And the role of the superintendent is to ensure that, that the school board, that all of you, have the information that you need so that you can make the best decision possible. And some ways that I've done this in the past, um, and, and, and I've been working with boards since 2000 and, well, 2001 <laughs> in Chicago Public Schools. Um, even the schools have um, local school councils that, that function similarly to a board. So I, as far back as 2001, I've been working with some form of governance structures and coming to boards of education and, and, or local school councils to get uh, approvals to, to move forward in that direction. What I found is that one, no one board member should have more information than others. All board members should have the same information. And I've been able to do that through regular board updates on a weekly basis, um, but also doing board briefings. So pulling two or three board members at a time and, and having conversations around topics that are coming in the future um, and, and getting consensus, getting an understanding, providing that information to board members. So when they're out in the community, they can answer the questions um, and, and they can engage with the public um, in a meaningful way in a knowledgeable way, and then there, there are no surprises from anyone. Now, I understand that we're going. I'm gonna come in, hopefully, as your superintendent, and we will have disagreements. Um, me as a superintendent, once the, once the Board of Education makes that decision, I will honor it, and I will implement it and, 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 and find success in, in implementation as I have in multiple other areas of, of leadership. Um, and the challenge now, um, you know, and, and, and I'm seeing across the country, is that we at times we have school board members that um, will engage in dialogue outside of their office. And we have to respect everyone's First Amendment rights. Everyone has the ability to have their own opinion. Um, we just need to make sure that we set the structure so that as you're voicing your opinion, we ensure that we're differentiating between the opinion of a board member in their personal spectrum um, as opposed to speaking for the board. And I think we will be able to, 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 to navigate this successfully. Some things that I will need, um, I'll need to ensure that we're having regular um, uh, retreats at least once per year where we can spend multiple days diving into our relationship. Uh, I've been married for over 18 years and I, you know, in that time <laughs> I've realized that uh, relationships take work and I see our relationship between superintendent and board member much like our marriage. So there were times when Aaron and I, we struggled and we had differences. And there were times where we had to go and get some type of outside help to, to talk us through our relationship, especially early on as we were trying to manage through what life meant living together. We will manage through what life is like working together. And at times we will need um, that outside voice. And I think that's where those retreats will come in so handy um, because we will be able to, to work through disagreements and then build a system and, and, and have a, 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 a way that we can come to consensus when we are in different viewpoints. This world is, is polarized and will continue to be polarized, but I know together we can um, 
focus on our common enemy of iller illiteracy and student achievement, and we will do the work together to make East Baton Rouge the premier school district in our country.